a special good evening to all our cherished viewers across the country. The Joy Learning Live Revision Show continues on Abated. Brought to your desktop all the way from Ko Ko Mlimli here in Accra. In fact, I must say that all the senior high school students preparing towards the upcoming exams are really going to have it. And trust me, Joy Learning have you covered. As you keep watching Joy Learning, you'll be able to study your subjects with ease. I'm Samo Sachi Ado, your geography tutor, and we are here tonight to take you through or to learn, we are here to learn geography. The affectionate name that most people know, or if I may say, that the name that is trending on all our social media handles is Boga Sam. When you call me Boga Sam, then I'll respond one time. Boga Sam, Ebefa, Boga Sam, Bibia, fine. I hope you are fully prepared to move along with me. And tonight, we are going to look at a topic that previously we started with. And that topic is desert and related landforms. In fact, you must be very careful in order not to add one S to the desert, making it desert. So desert is spelled D E. S E R T, desert. So we we'll look at desert and some of the landforms that are found in these desert areas. So, right away, let's move to the lesson. So, as you can see on your screen, the topic is desert and related landforms. Let's look at our objectives. By the time we are done with this particular lesson, what are we expected to know as geography students? Number one, by the time we are done, you should be able to explain wind action in desert areas. Wind action in desert areas. Then the second objective is to describe desert landforms using annotated diagrams. When I say annotated diagrams, once again, annotated is not a big word at all. All that it means is that after you have drawn the diagram, interpret the diagram. In other words, name the parts of the diagram. So that whoever looks at the diagram who understand and know how the parts of the diagram are labeled. Once you have labeled it, the person will get to know them. Is that okay? Now, SSC November 1993, SSC July 2004, WASI November 2007, WASI June 20. 13 was in November 2016. If you have checked all the past questions, these particular years, you realize that we have questions on desert and related landforms. Previously, we tackled the first question. And the first question is, describe the role of wind and the formation of desert landscape. The key word is to what? Uh, describe, the key word is role of, in fact, the phrase role of wind. Describe the role of wind in the formation of what desert landscape. So if you have actually studied the question well, what it means is that what work does the wind do in the desert? Is that okay? Now, the second question is, 
with the aid of suitable diagrams, describe one desert landform resulting from wind erosion, wind erosion, and one desert landform resulting from wind deposition. Wind erosion and wind deposition. Then the third question is, using diagrams, describe the features and mode of formation of two of the following. And then we have Yardans, Zergens, and Rock Pedestal. And so what are these landforms? Are they erosional landforms or depositional landforms? So as we delve into the lesson, we'll get to know all these. Now, wind erosional landforms. But before we start with the wind erosional landforms into details, let's have a quick recap about the role of the wind in the desert. If you really watched the previous show, I did say that the role of the wind or say the wind performs three main roles in the desert. And don't forget that the wind is the main geomorphic agent in the desert. That is not to say that water does not play a role. As we continue, we'll get to know the work that the water also does. If you remember, or if you can recall, I did teach you that the wind erodes and after erosion has taken place the materials that have been eroded are being transported so it means transportation is also one of the roles that the wind plays so the wind erodes it transports and it what deposits is that okay and when you put all these three rows together, we term it as denudational activities. Or, simply put, denudation. Erosion, transportation, and deposition. And so, this wind, acting as the main geomorphic agent, when it blows, it picks up loose and unconsolidated materials from the ground. Now, once these materials have been picked, of course, the landscape at that particular area will not be the same or will not remain the same. There will be some changes. And so that will tell you that if that is the case, then we'll have wind erosional landforms. Is that okay? Then also, we have the transportation. So we have processes of wind erosion, or say the mechanisms of wind erosion, and we also have processes of mechanisms of wind transportation. And we talked about all these. When we talk about the processes or the mechanisms of wind erosion, I made mention of deflation whereby the wind uses its shear force to pick these loose, small, light, unconsolidated materials from the ground. That is deflation. Is that okay? Then also we have another process, and that is abrasion. And when we talk of abrasion, we are talking of the process whereby after the wind has eroded or after the wind has picked up some materials, these materials as are used as the wind's cutting tools to erode further. And so we can have rocks and these materials, while the wind blows, the materials are being carried along. And these materials will be hitting the rock. And gradually, you see the rock eroding. Or breaking down so that has some aspect of 
wedding to when we get to that too, I will explain it in total. Then you understand. Apart from abrasion, we also have what we call attrition, whereby the materials in transit held against each other. In other words, they hit against each other. And also be hitting obstacles. And then gradually eroding these obstacles. That is about the processes or the mechanisms of wind erosion. And when it comes to wind transportation, I did teach you that we have suspension. When I talk of suspension here, I don't mean suspension in school when you have done something wrong. But then a situation whereby the small light loose materials are being picked up by the wind and moving in the air, okay, and be hitting obstacles. And so when the materials are being transported in the air, we are saying that the materials are suspended while they are being transported. So that is about the first process of wind transportation. We also have what we call sortation. Oh yes, this common sort, sortation. So sort, then you add A-T-I-O-N to it. But we are not talking about sort here. Sortation in this context means that the materials are being transported, but then these materials are somewhat, somewhat heavy. So at a point in time, the wind can pick it up. Okay, and put it down, it will pick it up, put it down. So we call it hopping and what? Bouncing. So the materials are being transported by hopping and what? And bouncing. That is what we mean by sortation. Then the third one is traction or surface creep. In the case of the traction, the materials are heavy. And so the wind does not have the strength or the energy of the wind cannot pick these materials up. And so what can it do? Only to roll it. In other words, push it. Or slide it. And so you see the materials moving gradually on the surface of the ground. So we call it surface creep or traction. So this is a quick recap about what we learned previously. And when it comes to desert, don't forget that it's a barren area of landscape whereby little precipitation is received. And then the conditions over there are not friendly at all. In other words, the conditions are hostile to plant and animal life. We talked about the two main classification of deserts. That is the hot desert and cold or temperate or mid-latitude deserts. Then from there, we'll look at some types of deserts. And I made mention of the hot and dry deserts, the cold winter desert. Talked, I talked about the coastal deserts, and the last one was the polar deserts. So today, I said tonight, we are going to continue from where we left off the other time. And to start with is wind erosional landforms. And what are some of these wind erosional landforms? We have deflation hollow or blow out. Deflation hollow or blow out. We also have what we call yardans, desert pavement. Okay? Then we can talk of zagins. Zagins, rock pedestals, ventifacts. Dry counters. Is that okay? So let's go back and try to read what we have on your screen. And that is wind is a powerful force that has the ability to shape a landscape. Okay? In deserts, wind action results in the formation of various landforms, which include the landforms that I've made mention of. Deflation hollow or blowouts. Yardans, desert pavement, zedins, rock pedestals, dry canters, and all that. So these are some of the wind erosional landforms. Now let's take them one after 
the other and talk about them. But before that, let's visit the questions so that we will not deviate. What are the questions? The, what do the questions say? Taking the question number two, with the aid of suitable diagrams, describe one desert landform resulting from wind erosion. So it means that one desert landform, we can get it from the landforms that I've just made mention of. So in this case, are you choosing blowouts or deflation hollow, or you are going to work on jardins or zedins, desert pavements, rock pedestal? So it is up to you, the candidate, to work on one. That is one wind erosional landform. Imagine the two and the three. The question three says, using diagrams, describe the features and mode of form formation. Is that okay? Mode of formation. So you talk about the landfall, as in the features or the characteristics. And then you tell the examiner how that landfall takes place or how it is formed. And the question three, the student is asked to work on two of the landforms. So the student has three options. Yardens, Zergens, and Rock Pedestal. So among these three, what two are you going to take? Or which of these are you going to take two from to work on? So let's go back. Now, Starting from the deflation hollow or the blowout, I say a blowout is a depression in the ground. When I talk of depression here, once again, I don't mean someone who is downhearted due to one or two reasons. But in this case, a depression, something like a hole. Okay? So a blowout is a depression in the ground where the top soil or sand has been carried away by the wind. It is shallow and a large basin ship depression. Is that okay? Blowouts have been grouped into saucer and trough. Saucer blowout is semicircular. Okay, we have saucer and trough. So saucer blowout is semicircular with a saucer ship. While the trough blowout is more elongated with deeper, with deeper basin and steeper slopes. I think this one to the other time, I did talk about it. So I'll speed up a bit. So let me summarize the deflation hole of the blowout. Then we'll take our time to continue from what we have not talked about. And so the blowout that we are talking about. In the deserts, I mean the hot deserts. Is that okay? The wind blows. And when the wind blows, it picks the loose, unconsolidated materials. When I say unconsolidated, it's not a word that is beyond you. In other words, not well packed together. So the materials are light. And then the wind blows these materials. Once the wind blows the materials, you will see something like a hole, a depression. That is what we mean by the depression over there. Okay? And this depression will be there, and then the wind will continue to blow. As the wind continues to blow, it picks some of the materials. In other words, it continues to pick the materials. And once it happens that way, don't forget that in terms of the size of the hollow, or in terms of the size of the depression, it will widen up. Then it will also what deepen. But now let me tell you, what actually deepens the depression is what we call the aiding action of wind. This aiding action of wind is what we normally call in our local dialect as motia and frama. So this wind will blow in that circular manner and as if it is drilling the ground, it will set in this depression. 
and then be eroding the depression vertically. To the extent that it will get to a time, this erosion will cease. What do you think will make the erosion cease? The erosion will cease when the hollow reaches out to the water table in the desert. Once the water table is reached out, water from under the ground will seep into the hollow. Then this hollow will have water in it to contain water. When the hollow contains water, we don't call it hollow again, but we call it oasis. So an oasis is a water in a basin shape hollow in the desert. Is that okay? So that is because, just as I said the other time we talked about it, so let's not spend my time on this. All right. So I've talked about all these. Let's go straight away to this side. Let me teach you. I'm going to teach you how to draw the deflation hollow in a short time. Then I'll show you a Google image of how the deflation hollow, then the oasis look like. So follow me. I have my horizontal. I'm using a free hand, so bear with me. You will be in the examination hall, then you have the ruler with you. Is that okay? I have another horizontal line here. Let me extend it a bit. So let me bring another horizontal line to indicate some layers. Then my, I join it with a vertical, with vertical lines. Then I extend another line here. I stand another one, making sure that this one is parallel to the first one. Then this one, too, I join it here. Okay. Draw another one here, making sure that it is parallel to this. Then I join. Good. Join this one, too. So, this is the ground. Now, we have some amount of sand that have been carried away by the wind. And the wind keeps blowing in such a way that we have a depression that is circular. So this, in this case, we are talking about a trough. Okay? Now, let's have some arrows to indicate the movement of the wind. And then, bring some lines here. Ah, then another arrow here, meaning after when the wind blows, I mean straighten the arrow a bit, we have the wind particles here. So we call this dust storm. Dust storm. Okay, good. So this arrow is giving us a clue about the aiding action of the wing what we call Mutia Frama. Good. Then, this circular object that you see, or the circular, I must say, circular image that you see, that is what we call the depression. Depending on how deep, but here will not help me, let me change. So, this whole thing, is the deflation deflation hollow so we have the deflation hollow of 
over here. And I told you that when it deepens in such a way that it reaches out to the water table and the water seeps into the hollow, that is when the oasis is formed. And oasis is spelled O A S I S. Oasis. That is singular. If it is plural, instead of I, you make it Y. E. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Oasis. So now let me show you some Google images. In fact, the images are not mine. So, okay, so I need to let you know the source. They are Google images. Good. So on your screen, this is what we call the deflation hollow. So from the start, you can see here that we have the sand. And then it is like there's a hole here. So that's what we call a depression, okay? And when it deepens, it becomes a hollow. And when it is further deepened, when vertical erosion really takes place, this will reach out to the water table. And then this hollow will have water in it. And the water is what you see just by the side of the sand. Okay, so when you come to the right picture, you see the water there. So this is what we call oasis. I think we are good to go. Because on joy learning, even if you have not been understanding somewhere, once you keep watching joy learning, you can learn at ease. Because we move at your pace. Good. Now, we are on the next wind erosional landfall. Don't forget the question. One wind erosional landform and one wind depositional landform. And then the third question made mention of Yardans, Zajins, and Rock Pedestal. So after we have learned the deflation hollow, it means at least you have one wind erosional landform. And the second one that we are looking at is Yardans. Yardans. So what are Yardans? But then let me tell you something here. Questions of this nature, the examiner expects you to describe the landfall. Give examples. Then, you come out with a suitable diagram. Not forgetting to name the parts of the diagram. And then, you tell the examiner how it is formed. Don't forget the question three. It made it point blank. The mode of formation of the landforms. So you describe it, in other words, you give out the characteristics of the landfall. You tell the examiner, you have some examples on mind, you indicate them, you draw your di the diagrams. Please don't, don't spend too much time on diagram. Be taking your erasers and be erasing all that. No. Just be quick about them. And then you add more information by telling the examiner how that landform is for. I hope that is fine with you. So we are on yard dance. What are yard dance? So per the description, the term yardan originates from the Turkic language. Turkic language, which means a steep bank. Here yeah, we are not talking of the place where we deposit our monies and also cash out or say withdraw. No. A steep bank. And you know it as a geography student. And it was Sven Anda, Sven uh, Anda Heden, okay, a Swedish explorer who introduced it to the English language in 1903. So it's been quite a long time. But then you were not born myself i was not born okay 
they form in environment that is the yardans the yardans form in environment where water is very scarce and the prevailing winds are strong of course in the hot desert areas in fact in the desert areas water is what is scarce and in the, these hot desert areas the winds too are strong so these yardans are series of ridges attention here they are series of ridges which lie parallel to the direction of the prevailing winds series of ridges and when we talk of ridges we are talking of long narrow hills okay now yardans consists of alternative band of hard and soft rock rocks okay so as we move along i will draw the yardans to you and then you will understand so let's make progress so on the description of yardans the ridges are separated by long corridors long corridors when i talk of long corridors it does not mean the corridors in our homes as in the buildings okay so this long corridors called grooves or furrows grooves or furrows the height of a yard may range between 6 to 15 meters and sometimes above they are features of wind abrasion take note of this features of wind abrasion they are irregular in shape so we are still describing the yard or say the yard dance okay they are irregular in shape and deeply undercut at the windward side and when I draw the diagram, you will understand them well. They lie parallel to each other. And they have a fantastic appearance of a coxcomb. When I say coxcomb, I don't mean the flower coxcomb. And I also don't mean that the cock that we have in our homes has a comb that it uses to style the feathers. No. <laughs> I mean that part of the cock which is on top of the head. That is what we call the comb. Okay? So more or less, that is how the yardans look like. And examples can be found in the interior desert of Asia and also the Atacama Desert. In Africa, Jardins can be found in Algeria and Kompombo in Egypt. So you have seen that I have described the Jardins. And after describing the Jardins, I have added examples to tell the examiner that I know what I am expected to do. Now, we are done with the description. We are also done with the examples. So, in answering questions of this nature, you may choose to bring the diagram before telling the examiner how it is formed. Because the diagram, once you draw it and you annotate it, it gives a lot of information about what you intend putting out there. But in this case, we are looking at the mode of formation. When we are done, we look at the diet. Now, yardans are formed whenever soft and hard rock. So we have soft, soft and hard bands of rocks lie vertically 
and alternatively in a desert area. These rocks may also lie parallel to the direction of the prevailing wind. Where these conditions exist, wind charged with sand grains wears away the soft rock easily. And this one you would agree with me. Even if you are not a geographer, erosion is taking place and we have portions of the rock being hard and others being soft. So once the erosion is taking place, you answer it. Which portions of the rock do you think the erosion will be faster? Of course, the soft portions. Not so? Good. Now, the result is that corridors are developed. Living corridors are developed, leaving the hard bands of rock standing and overlooking the corridors of the irregular undercut steep sided ridges. So, after reaching here, even if you have not seen the diagram or you have not seen an image of a yard dam, you have a clear picture. These ridges are what we call yard dams. Yard dams. So it means we are also done with the mode of formation. Now, let's draw it and see how the yard dam looks like. And after we have drawn it, we continue to look at some Google images to see whether what we have drawn is correct or not. So I have my blank page. I'm coming to draw the yard dams. But in the first place, I must let the reader or say the examiner know how the rock looked like before erosion took place and later we had the yard dance. So what I'm going to draw is before wind abrasion. And I have already explained abrasion. Whereby the wind uses the materials that it is carrying along as its cutting tools or its sculpturing tools, okay, to be scratching, to be, to be wearing away the rocks or any obstacle that it comes its way, okay? So I'm coming to draw before wind abrasion. Then you will know how the rock looked like. And then when I'm done with the before, I'll go ahead to draw the after wind abrasion. And that is where we'll get our yard dams. So let's go together. So in the first place, I have my horizontal line here. Once again, using a free hand. I have another horizontal line here. Then I join them with a vertical with vertical line. Let me join them with the vertical lines. Good. Now we said the yard dance are made up of alternative bands of hard and soft rocks. And these bands of hard and soft rocks are vertically positioned. So I'm going to do that. So I bring one vertical line here 
another one here. Then I have another one here. Is that okay? Then, once again, I extend this one here. Extend another one, making sure that it is parallel to the first one. Also, parallel to this one. Then this strip of lines here, I join them to form the elongated lines. Okay, good. I join this one. Good. And I join the last one. This my line. Good. Let me draw my lines again. Good. Then the vertical line. Here. Okay. So we have hard rocks and soft rocks. So let me use some symbols to differentiate between the hard rocks and the soft rocks, okay? So the hard rocks, what symbol should we use? Let's use the multiplication sign to indicate the hard rocks, okay? Good. So, this one is hard. This one you need not to waste time because you are time bound in the examination hall. Then, the other one, we can use dots, okay? So, let's use dots. But very soon, we shall go for a quick break, okay? Then this one to use multiplication, sign. So, we have hard, soft, hard. So this one, Soft. All right. So from this diagram, we have our hard rock. So you name it hard rock. Then we have our soft rock. Before, don't forget to write this. Before wind abrasion. Okay. Then, the direction of the prevailing, prevailing wind, sorry. So, wind direction. Is that okay? So, cherished viewers, after we have got to this point, I want us to go for a quick break. And when we come back, we continue. Please stay glued. Wow, wow. You welcome back from the break. I believe once again, you are fully prepared to move along with me till we are done for the lesson. So before we went for break, we were looking at the diagram of Yada, trying to draw it. We told the examiner that we know what we are about and so before yardans are formed what you see on your screen indicates that that was how the rock looked like so before wind abrasion now that we have this 
Take note of the direction of the wind. The wind is blowing from this side to this side. And so the wind would use the materials it is carrying to be hitting the rock. And as I told you earlier, the softer parts of the rock will evolve faster. So we are done with the before wind admission. Let's go to the after wind admission. Another space for me to draw. Okay? Good. So I have my horizontal line, which is here. Another one here. Then I'll join them as usual. Okay. So, let me clean this one first. For you in the examination hall, you can connect that line. No, I've just cleaned the first horizontal line. As for you, you can draw it. And when you are done indicating the softer parts that have been eroded faster, you can use the eraser to erode those, uh, sorry, to raise those portions. Okay? I'm using this strategy because when I clean, the whole line goes. I think we are good to go now. So, I indicate my first hard rock. Then the soft will come. Then we have another hard. Then we have the soft. Okay? So, here, because the rock is hard, even if erosion will take place, it wouldn't be that serious. Because if you make it straight, there's a natural occurrence. It, sometimes it can be that straight, okay? So I have my hard rock beads. And when it comes to the softer parts, don't forget that it erodes faster. And so it has gone down. Okay, it means all this part, the, the whole of this part has been eroded. Then I come to you. The next one, which is hard, so I have it right there. Okay. And this one, I think it's quite long. Let me reduce it a bit. Sorry. So, quickly, I join. Okay. So, this one too is soft. Okay. Then, because the upper part has been eroded, Pen. It's unfortunate. In fact, just as you are watching, very soon we shall activate the lines. And then you can phone in or say call in. Then, if you can answer some of the questions, in fact, you should be able to answer some of the questions. You let us know. If you get it, we clap for you. But before you, you answer the question, you, you must first tell us your name, the school in which you are, okay? And probably if you have a swag name, let us know that one too. It's unfortunate. My, my pen is disappointing me. So let's go for a quick break once again. Then when we come back, we speed up a bit so that we can cover some. Things.